All right. So uh, before I get to Tarun's doubt, let me just clarify one thing. So Saruni was asking about these courses and stuff, right? And I have also sent you a list of uh, MOOC portals and stuff like that before. Okay. So uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, get you guys distracted. The thing that should be understood very clearly is that all this extra stuff that we are giving you, okay, extra stuff that you can do, that it's it's assumed that it is after you do justice to your curriculum. Okay, and especially since you guys have chosen finance now, you will be known as for MBA finance students. So at least you make sure they do justice to your MBA finance curriculum. Okay, so your all the stuff that you so whatever else before you take on some extra stuff outside. Okay, uh, I would suggest you make sure that you understand your FM1 and FM2 syllabus very well. Okay, and out of that, I would initially point you to financial statement analysis, which you would have done, I think, maybe at least not in FM1, FM2 accounting. So when I say FM one and FM2 it includes the accounting courses also so all your finance and accounting so you can't be weak in accounting if you're an MBA finance student you can't be weak in accounting okay so two things that I would tell you straight away first is double entry bookkeeping everybody had better understand how to do double entry bookkeeping that is to pass journal entries for any imagined transaction in the world okay if I tell you any transaction you should be able to just like that do double uh, tell me what the journal entries are make up some names of accounts but it has to obviously make sense right you can't write accounts payable for accounts receivable so but make up some uh, you know names of accounts but you should be able to show that you have understood the transaction this is a very good test it's an asset test for understanding any transaction if you can pass the right journal entries for the transaction that means you have understood the transaction that's one important test so if whether you're from a commerce background or not you better make sure that before you graduate okay you are very fluent in these journal entries and this concept of double entry bookkeeping this is one of the essential uh, requirements of a finance student it should be totally fluid for you if you have any doubts you can go and ask Ratham sir you can come to me or whatever okay practice it okay so make sure this is your responsibility once again you'll notice a lot of the stuff uh, that you have to do in this correct in this uh, program uh, towards becoming a better finance student a lot of the stuff has to be done by you okay I can't sit here and spoon feed you stuff okay so I'm like your coach as I told you I will tell you that okay your forehand is weak you better go and work on your forehand and you got to do it on your own okay so this is how it has to go so I'm telling you this is something you need to work on you make sure that it happens okay and as I said if you have any doubts you come to me you come to Ratan sir or anybody else okay journal entries 100% clarity and there's no such thing as I've understood a little bit and all that either you are totally confident and fluent or you're not okay so that's one number two number two financial statement analysis at this point of time as far as your fm1 and uh, two syllabus is concerned i would only direct you to these two parts later on if i think some other parts are more relevant are, are also relevant then i'll direct you there financial statement analysis let me write this stuff down here okay um, journal entries for any transaction okay you understand what I mean by this right now we already had the discussion uh, so for this we write journal entries for any transaction plus uh, fin statement analysis Is it okay if I write these short forms? Yes, sir. Financial statement analysis. Balance sheet PL. You can access all the material, whether you go to Money Control or Reuters or Yahoo Finance, you can access all the material. Be familiar with balance sheet and PL for you guys should be like WhatsApp. Okay. So, and you should be able to do any kind so, and then revise your ratios. F financial statement analysis, then including cash flow statement. Okay cash flow statement fund flow state I mean then statement of in the US they have a concept of statement of changes in shareholders equity okay that also you should master it's not a big deal it's the same concept once your balance sheet and finance balance sheet and p and uh, concepts are clear you should be able to see changes in uh, uh, shareholders equity how it's happening okay so uh, financial statement analysis including 
cash flow statement etc so when i say etc means all the other statements are also included okay so all this stuff you should be able to do again what will happen is this will also get and this will also help you when uh, dg sir does a course last year we did it in the last semester so maybe this year also we'll have it in the same way the last semester you'll do a course called corporate financial modeling which is essentially a mix of your uh, financial statement analysis skills and excel okay the ability to program in excel understand that well again i've used excel actually i should say spreadsheets okay because you can do the whole course without excel you can do it in google sheets okay you can do it in zoho sheets there are all kinds of uh, sheets available online uh, you can do it in microsoft uh, online drive microsoft uh, online program online 365 or whatever it is okay so uh, it's a combination so if you do this it'll also help you there okay once again make sure that all this stuff you have to uh, take it to the level you keep on practicing okay everything you have to have this habit of practicing because i have a feeling that most of you guys are not doing this for any subject you have to practice it until you can just do it in your sleep okay and until you get there for some people it may require five sessions some people it might require 11 sessions that is uh, you adapt it to your individual needs but you have to practice it to you till you can do it in your sleep and you know you can't fool yourself you you know when you've got there or not whether you've got there or not so you practice it till you can do it in your sleep okay so this includes cash flow statements plus uh, ratio analysis okay you've done dupont ratio analysis yes. Yes. okay so all this stuff that you've done dg sir's book will have a lot of material on this okay if i have i've given you some uh, i've given you the uh, I'll, I'll try and find some other material if you have uh, I'll show you something else on ratio analysis you should add so for ratio analysis make sure you do a taxonomy of the ratios okay that is a classification of the ratios okay so don't try to remember just ratios all because there are so many ratios you will get a little confused so when you whenever you're required to discuss financial state uh, financial ratios okay you should always call categories into your mind so that is you have activity ratios okay uh, profitability ratios ratios and then you should say under profitability ratios i have a b c d c, e okay under activity ratios i have a b c d e etc okay so therefore what i would say is so, so this is what you should do so to create a taxonomy and then uh, ratio analysis plus uh, including taxonomy okay and here let me uh, so the word taxonomy which you will encounter again uh, so you're learning a new word okay so taxonomy means two things that can be used in two senses okay one is that it's a classification system okay a taxonomy is a classification system in your bi uh, biology classes in school you might remember all this genus species yeah. mammals etc right so uh, all these things uh, so we are from the genus is mammals if i remember right and species is homo sapiens we are from the species homo sapiens but there are other mammals also as you know right so uh this this system is called a taxonomy okay i mean the whole science of classification is referred to as taxonomy but a particular classification can also be referred to as a taxonomy that is also a proper use of so so if i take all the web students and classify them into bba students uh you know llm students okay then uh, uh mca students bca students that and say that okay these are the categories of web students then that's also a taxonomy so that i would refer to as a taxonomy of web students okay is this clear so it can be used in two ways it's a science of classification okay and the methods and principles that are included in that or it could also refer to a particular classification in both cases you use the word taxonomy is this clear so you've learned a big word okay so if you want to impress people you can just say taxonomy okay okay i'll show you we we'll, we'll learn some other big words as well so ratio analysis including taxonomy and on this point what we want to add there's one category of ratios that may not be there uh, in a typical finance textbook because most of the ratios that are discussed are based completely on the finance uh, the uh, balance sheet and the pnl okay completely on the financial statements okay but there is one category of ratios which is uh, not really based on completely on the financial statements okay which is basically this so let me just show you here if we go to finviz this also you can play around with this is uh, 
and this has some pretty good software. Even the free versions have some pretty good software. Okay, so here if you go. Uh, It's taking a long time to load. Okay, let's if we look for Intel here. Okay, the ticker for Intel is INTC. If I go for Intel, okay, then okay, I get this. Okay, so here I would go here and look for uh, let's look for uh, highlights. Okay, now you notice that it takes you to this Reuters uh, page. Okay, so I would actually put this here. This is the link that you should have because if you try to go to Reuters directly Reuters.com from the from India it, it will keep bouncing you back to the India website where we'll have some problems. Okay, so ratio analysis including taxonomy here I'm putting in a ticker and you'll see why because if you see here now this is the uh, uh, financials for Intel it's just sending you to Reuters. Okay, now let's look at uh, so you can look at all this stuff some of the stuff that people look at here so you have these valuation ratios okay these are uh, again really not part of strictly speaking financial statement analysis but it does include some information from the financial statements so you should add the valuation ratios also okay into this as part of your I mean put it in there because we can discuss it in valuation as well but uh, we can just put this in here so what I'm trying to say is because you notice something about the valuation ratio okay so some examples of valuation ratios are what is this P stand, what does P stand for price to earnings okay so out of this which which uh, out of in this ratio which one comes out of the financial statements earnings right okay and even then if you notice uh, there is this uh, TTM part what does TTM stand for so TTM stands for trailing 12 months okay so trailing 12 months means we don't go by uh, the complete uh, we don't go by the uh, the discrete uh, financial years so when I'm in March it will be the last 12 months when I'm in June once again it will be the last 12 months so it's like a moving average kind of thing it keeps on shifting okay so trailing the basically that any time any point of time the last 12 months okay so this when, when I asked you this question uh, which of these comes from the financial statements okay the answer is earnings but actually the answer should have been even more specific because it's only the TTM it's only in the case of the TTM PE ratio that the earnings figure comes out of the financial statements okay there is also something called uh, here they haven't given the other PE okay they've only clarified this but let me just clarify since we are discussing this at this point okay PE ratio which is very important okay it should be TTM it can either be TTM or it will be what is called forward PE okay okay so it's either p ratio ttm or it's a forward p ratio so this should be like this okay all right so six are you able to follow why i made this statement that so you have to understand there are two types of p ratios okay one is the trailing 12 months so it'll write ttm in brackets like this okay you'll find this on yahoo finance as well uh, so that in that case the denominator comes straight out of the financial statements because they take the earnings of the last 12 months the actual earnings as reported okay the actual earnings as reported uh, for the last 12 months are taken as the earnings figure for the year okay and then you have the price which is coming from the market okay so that's the TTM PE ratio is everyone clear about that price per share divided by earnings per share okay so you take the earnings per share from the balance uh, from the financial statements okay and you take the trailing 12 months data and you have the the one year earnings per share okay and then you have the price of the uh, the market price okay that's one then then there is the forward p ratio the forward p ratio is
so all this stuff is in your notes obviously you have this file in your folder okay so you don't need to write this just make sure you understand it okay consensus earnings estimates from equity analysts okay okay so uh, from equity analysts okay this is uh, you can have basically uh, usually one year forward okay when you see a forward p e ratio you have to calc you have to see exactly how it is uh, usually it will be a one year forward uh, p e next year's earnings projection okay uh, for so so this obviously do you think here this denominator does it come out of the financial statements this earnings figure in the forward p e ratio is it coming out of the financial statements at least directly it's not it is coming out of the earnings estimates given by analysts okay so different analysts so here they will take the the median estimate is taken okay the median estimate of analysts is taken is taken as uh, projected uh, forward in this case it's not forward pe it's forward earnings and then you just apply the market price so if you go in fact if on yahoo finance you'll see that in right uh, here the reuters page is showing you only the ttmp I, I think on yahoo finance if you go there and see the comparable display uh, they'll show you both they'll show you the forward pe as well as the ttmp okay the trailing so this ttm is usually sometimes called the tra trailing price earnings ratio and this is the forward price earnings ratio okay so when you see uh, people discussing on business television you will see uh, now who has opened this Chug has opened it no, no need for you to open it because you can see it on the screen okay so uh, uh, so this is uh, so so you take the uh, you get a whole bunch of equity analysts who are forecasting one year forward earnings per share for intel okay and then you take that uh, one year forward you take the median forecast okay there'll be a bunch of forecasts you take the median forecast now let me just test because i found out with your seniors that uh, nobody knew what median was <laughs> your immediate senior batch uh, in the second year when they were doing it and i discovered this quite late because i the occasion didn't arise until fdrm or something which is the third uh, the final uh, earnings uh, the final elective course yes so Kriti, can you tell me what is median give her the mic give her the mic let's you make use of the mic does it work don't tell don't ask her don't ask her you tell me sorry come again be, uh, be, be quiet i can't hear her something in the middle what is something in the middle no no be specific you have to answer you're a finance student now you have to you can't say something in the middle give me a specific answer so if i have uh, say uh, if i have 11 observations okay arranged from say low to high okay what is going to be my median okay 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 good so at least so sure you have understood median yeah what happened okay so only one person goes out at a time you're the gatekeeper okay all right so yeah so she has understood so the median is the one which is the the middlemost value right okay so uh, the one way half the uh, things are above and half the observations are below right yeah the sorry yeah and of course you have to interpolate if you have like an even number okay if you have an even number of observations then you'll have to interpolate and find the median okay at least good very good that at least you guys are much better than your senior batch as far as the retention and median is concerned okay good so in general remember in general remember in financial markets whenever we look at uh, in financial markets whenever, whenever we look at the estimated figure okay like if you might listen to gdp data is coming out okay and they look at what was expected one of the things they would look at is what was expected so let me actually since we are having this discussion let me put this also um, global yeah it's actually there okay it's not there. 
okay so here this is the web page on which you can get this is another important thing that you guys should look at uh, just keep track of which is this is the uh, economic calendar okay so the economic calendar the global econ uh, economic calendar on which um, so it's taking a long time anyway it doesn't matter so in in financial markets in general uh, whenever people are talking about some kind of estimate analyst estimate what are people expecting okay what are people expecting anywhere where you are going to take uh, input from a whole bunch of analysts or economists and try to come up with some kind of a measure of central tendency okay to give one number as an expected number what is the market expecting okay when you listen to us non farm payrolls uh, releases you'll see that the market was expecting 165000 and the data came out as 195000 okay so it was better than expected okay so when you when you hear what well, what was ex how did you arrive at the expected number the expected number is generally used is generally taken as the median of the uh, economists who have been surveyed okay the median forecast that is what is the expected number so it's important to understand that so if you see here uh, actually there should be a global anyway never mind I'll just put this here in your uh, okay let's just put it here um, median estimate of analysts so okay this is another useful website uh, I, I can't see the calendar here but I'll put the calendar in later okay all right so is this clear so far are you guys following yes sir, yes, sir. okay so uh, so so on the, the the theme that we have been developing is that all the initial material that have that has been given to you all through the MOOC courses and whatever stuff that you know Saloni is looking at other stuff okay that can be done only when you feel confident that you have mastered everything that has been taught to you in the curriculum and especially since for, for F, uh, finance students I've already told you go back and master journal entries and master your financial statement analysis ratio analysis all this stuff okay do multiple exercises it will help you in your last uh, financial corporate financial modeling course as well and I think essentially after this you don't really need to do uh, anything outside because I'm finding it uh, I'm finding that a lot of your seniors also are not a batch after batch we are finding students who are not able to master the entire curriculum okay so your first goal should be to master and master means once you uh, once you understood the concept thoroughly you'll never forget it in your life or at least next not for the next 10 15 years okay so that that's how well you have to master it so I would suggest uh, that you don't have to at this point of time you don't need to worry about uh, all the other stuff that is floating around ex ex outside okay so if we feel that you really need to do something I'll let you I'll let you know and then you'll have a lot of other workload that has been given to you outside the curriculum tracking those stocks five or six stocks which I've asked you to track that is very important activity okay so um, right so don't get swayed by I think to some extent I see this problem uh, there was quite big significant in your senior batch that people get obsessed with gathering certificates okay I think there's a tendency to try and gather certificates and I want to gather certificates and put it on my CV don't be stupid because uh, the people who come to interview you are not stupid people so they'll be able to sense it immediately immediately if your concepts are not clear you can't fool people by gathering certificates if your concepts are not clear if your concepts are clear then it's fine okay but you make sure that your finance concepts are absolutely clear especially financial statement analysis is very important uh, skill and it's a really useful skill I would say compared to all your Markowitz portfolio construction all this efficient frontier and stuff although really not much use in the real world okay it's very theoretical but financial statement analysis if you can master it is a very useful skill okay in the real world because that's uh, pretty much what you'll be doing a big chunk of what you'll be doing as an equity analyst or a credit analyst okay so it's very good to have a grasp of financial statements and ratio analysis okay right so that's the first lesson don't get distracted don't get uh, you know don't get seduced by the certificate gathering uh, thing okay uh, forget about all that focus on your curriculum focus on knowledge and focus on mastery of concepts okay everybody understands by now what a concept is yes, sir. right so all the stuff if you take back go back to the example of your law course like if I ask you now what is an ultra virus transaction in corporate law you'll be able to tell me yes sir. so the concept here is that you'll be able to take the 
objects clause from the memorandum okay and that objects clause defines the company's capacity to contract okay and so through the activities that are listed in the objects clause and so if the company engages in any transaction which is not covered by the activities in the objects clause that's an ultra virus transaction because it's beyond the powers of the company so the specific pillar on which that contract would uh, the agreement would fail would be that the company doesn't have the capacity to engage in that contract enter into that contract okay so this is what i mean by a concept so if your concept is clear you'll answer like this and then once you have understood it this way uh, you'll never forget it is this clear so whenever you see all the material that has been taught to you you should be able to detect now where there's a concept involved and then make sure you understand that concept thoroughly is that clear okay so that's the first lesson extra courses and need to revise so no basically lots of need to revise and no extra courses okay that's the uh, no extra courses <coughs> lots of need to revise okay that takes care of all this stuff okay yeah anything any question okay we are coming to chug has a bunch of questions and this is now this is bringing us to the next class next point okay it's bringing us to the next point which is um, alertness in class okay let's just take it from here okay so uh, the other problem that i'm finding is now who can help us with let's say chohan can you tell us what is Ch uh, chug has these questions bearish bullish long and short do you know what bearish is yes, yes. yeah tell give him the mic tell us what bearish is so tell me here if i'm looking at this chart here so here's my dollar yen chart i actually have a position in this but let's see so i'm yeah if i tell you that i'm bearish on dollar yen so what is what does johan make of it what do, what does that mean what is my view is it working hello yeah it's working yeah uh, when this stock is low and don't talk in terms of stock okay. talk in general terms okay talk in terms of a market because here i'm talking about dollar yen which is we're talking about currency markets there's no stock involved here so if i tell you that my view on dollar yen is bearish okay what does that mean what do you understand about what my uh, projection for this market is uh, sir, is my question clear? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the market is actually not doing well. Can you be a little bit? Uh, can you be more specific? <coughs> my, I'm telling you that my view on dollar yen is bearish. So, what do you from uh, from hearing the statement? What do you understand about what kind of mental projection I'm making about this market? Remember, I told you you have to make mental projections. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so we'll save some time. I'm sure Tarun knows the answer, but uh, we'll save some time. Essentially, what this means is that my mental projection for this market is that is going down. Okay, this is what it means. It's going down. Okay, so uh, this is what is meaning of bearish. Okay, so the general point I want to make before I explain these specific terms is uh, so John was close that uh, you feel that it's not very good. You need to be more specific. Okay, essentially that to be you can be very specific and say that I expect this to go down this this particular thing i would expect this to keep going down here and making new lows okay and to be more specific actually uh, you if you point out the actual highs then i don't expect it to be going above this okay but essentially what this means in broad terms bearish means that i expect this market to go down okay now coming to this uh, the more general point alertness and class so this i mean chug was telling me that indira ma'am has also used these terms bearish and short many times but then my point is why have you not if you hear terms that you don't understand okay this is what i mean by being alert and what i call listening aggressively okay listening aggressively means you are very alert and as soon as you encounter any word that you don't understand you should immediately ask a question okay have i forbidden you from asking questions no, so then why my point is that if and i'm sure if i ask everybody not everybody would have been able to give a good definition of bearish so that means many other people did not understand this term but nobody bothered to ask so you need to another thing you need to change if you want to be a serious finance student you have to be because the material that is covered is vast okay and almost every day if you go back to the, the video lectures almost every day i'm pretty much continuously throwing new concepts at you okay so if you better understand everything otherwise i will not move to the
your next concept until everybody has understood the first concept. That's how we should operate. Okay. I'm not concerned with, luckily we have the flexibility here. We don't have to do this stupid syllabus chasing, which I think is not a very intelligent way to teach. Yes, so, uh, because then you have a pressure, they don't, you don't have quality. Okay. So what we want to ensure, but at the same time, what we want to ensure and your role is very crucial in this is that we must ensure that whatever we have covered, okay, I'm sitting here shouting, I have a tendency to shout anyway. So I'm sitting here, sit, uh, sitting here shouting all the time, okay? So, and you guys are spending, wasting your time, uh, you know, sitting in the class and listening to me. So let's make sure that this whole exercise and this expenditure of time and energy on our, on our part is uh, fruitful, okay? And fruitful means that everybody, whoever hasn't understood a particular concept, should uh, immediately ask a question okay so that we can clarify that concept okay this is how you learn because unless you ask questions uh, you'll find it's very difficult to learn like i was watching a mit course on statistics and uh, at a point when he explained a few terms i had a question because just to make sure that i've understood it correctly okay but obviously i couldn't ask the question because i'm looking at it on youtube right so this is why you need to be in class because in order to internalize something perfectly in your head okay to to understand the concept perfectly you need to understand it in your own particular way and then you also need to make sure that you have understood it correctly okay so that's why it's important to ask questions in the class so make sure you do this don't make this mistake anytime you encounter any term which you don't understand immediately you have to ask me okay so that we can clarify this okay so now bearish is clear okay so bearish is yeah one sec so oh, you also had a question i forgot to come to that okay one sec so let me first explain uh, bearish and bullish okay so obviously i'm not going to go around asking too many people because we want to save a little time as well um okay i hope you guys are not finding this format boring because obviously it's done i could also go around and ask 15 people but then obviously we are losing that much time okay so you have to as i told you you have to understand this i'm not here to make finance interesting to you these are the concepts that you need to understand if you want to be a finance student and it is your responsibility to master the concepts i am here to explain the concepts to you and to design the syllabus is everyone okay with this yes, sir. this deal is okay yes sir. you have signed up for this are you okay <laughs> okay good so bearish and bullish let me just explain okay these are ap applied okay let's have it in blocks so it's easier for me to see applied to views okay on markets we'll explain what markets are we haven't even got to markets applied to views on markets so here let me just so view is like essentially a mental projection okay so for instance my view on dollar yen is bearish and specifically what that means is my view was that's why i went short over here my view was that this this downtrend is still continuing okay so this will go this way it will go and go further lower than this below 106 below this and eventually even break this and it will not go above this remember i told you that whenever you form views you also have to decide you have to also identify a point on the chart okay uh, at which your or beyond which your view is wrong okay so this is my basic view my basic view is that this downtrend is continuing so this will actually go down from here and break below this break eventually break below this as well and what is the uh, pain point or the you know uh, point at which my view is invalidated it is this high if the market goes higher than this okay then my view uh, I've, I've decided that i will surrender my I, I will give up my view okay so this is how the view is formed so this is a bearish view and this essentially is the stop for the bearish view this is clear this is what we loosely call a stop loss but when you come to study orders you'll see that systems don't accept any stop loss orders what they accept are stop orders the technical term is stop orders but it's useful to think of it initially as a stop loss it uh, gives you a little context okay this is clear so far this is the meaning of a bearish view yeah okay yes okay i'm coming to that that will get answered a little later okay so uh, we'll just come to that uh, we have to dis understand markets as well because we haven't even understood markets so there is a technical definition of markets as well which you will learn but this the idea first is that bearish and bullish are applied to views on markets and a view is like a mental projection okay that you have to make a mental because otherwise you can't trade 
uh, you can't do anything not just trade but even to manage risk for a corporation if you're a CFO looking at an equity issue okay uh, you will have to take a view on the market because if you think the market is going up a lot okay immediately then you will not raise capital right now you'll wait let the market rise for a long uh, for a while and then at much higher levels you'll try to sell your equity but if you feel the market is going straight down immediately then you'll hurriedly try to sell your equity so that you capture the high levels of the market are you following so it's not just about trading it's also about managing risk for a corporation everywhere you go in finance you'll have to take a view on markets pretty much everywhere okay that's why these courses are heavily centered on financial markets and that's why you have these uh, three uh, project driven uh, project I mean, software based uh, projects which give you a feel for actual market prices and how they move okay this is clear okay so this is a bearish and bullish are views that we are, are adjectives used to describe views on markets that a view is a mental, mental projection okay so if that is the case then the bullish view is obviously if my view is bullish then is going up right so if my view is bullish then the market is going up okay so um, applied to views on markets okay so here I think it's already written down in your notes I've explained it in your notes okay I'm just gonna write up here sorry this should be down it's already there in your notes and when you when you look at the actual flow of your notes which is here in this unit one when you look at that unit one uh, it's there in your notes we can find it in your notes but anyway I'm just writing it here I'm just writing bearish implies down and bullish implies up is this clear all right okay and it's sometimes sometimes people use it to describe his so it's usually because a view is a mental projection about the future so the classical use of these terms and the proper use of these terms is with respect to future movement what will happen okay that is the right way to uh, describe it sometimes people might do uh, what sometimes people might say is that if they look at just this part let's say if they've just been looking at this part they might also say that the dollar yen has been in a bearish trend recently that means they are using it to describe past activity okay so are you following sometimes people might say that because it's been going down so they might say that but that's not a very good use of the term the proper use of the term is to use it to refer to views which essentially are focused on the future okay views are on the future and uh, views relate to the future so therefore it's used to the classical use of bearish and bullish is for uh, to describe views on the future of uh, market activity or uh, the directional move in the market okay so bullish bearish and long and short again some of this stuff will become a little clearer when you uh, we will do it once again so here long and short we'll actually I'd rather do this later but essentially let's just um, I'll just write uh, this way okay we'll do a more technical definitions a little later so long means essentially here like as I told you my view was bearish okay so so I went short dollar yen at this point okay I went short over here and my stop is over here so we'll have to see if my stop is triggered okay so uh, at this point it's still okay so I've gone short here so bearish and short go together and bullish and long go together okay so uh, when you have a bearish view ideally what you should do is you should go short okay sometimes people have a view but they don't do anything but if you do something on the back of your view uh, you would be going uh, in the case of a bearish view you would be going short okay and uh, in the case of a bullish view you would be going long okay so we'll come with uh, we'll, we'll give you more def technical definitions of this a little bit later when we cover the necessary material okay so we still have to come to Tarun's question so we have covered bearish bullish long and short yes Duke? you are satisfied so far with the, the limited definitions right bearish bullish long and short okay now coming back to Tarun's question you had a question earlier uh, use the mic Sir, as per my view, uh, bearish and bullish until 
My okay, one more thing. As per, As just be aware. In India, you'll have a problem because if you just say per, people will say you're using wrong English. But actually, as per is superfluous. Okay, and so uh, because per is a Latin word which means according to so if you say as per you are saying as according to which is not correct but in india you'll find even supreme court judgments they're writing as per so but if you if you look at any any document written by australians or britishers or americans you will not find as per you will see that it's per okay so the correct usage is per but as i said of course in india if you say per people will say you're using wrong english but anyway so you should be aware of this okay all right go ahead Sir, according to me, our parents <laughs> Good, good, good. Very good. He is applying his learning straight away. Yes. Parents and Polish until uh, now, uh, whatever knowledge I had, it meant to be like Polish, uh, meant to be a slow moving quantum uh, when quantum of moving of market was very slow. Like it does, uh, the price of something uh, doesn't change this much, then it is known. Doesn't change it. much. Yeah. Doesn't. So okay, no, that's not a correct understanding of bearish and bullish. That is a, that you would describe it as saying that the market is not very volatile or is very volatile so that you should what you're referring to is market volatility or you can say talk about trading ranges okay sometimes you have uh, very tight trading ranges like i showed you guys the chart of if you see the classical chart of uh, crude oil that i showed you guys the west texas crude oil chart if we look at the monthly So it's only like this. Let's look at weekly. And why is it like that? I thought we had right. So if you look at this crude oil price movement uh, in this period, okay, from 1985, before that also, all the way up to here, you can see that the trading ranges. You understand what is a trading range? Is the amount of, I mean, the high and the low essentially defined by the high and the low, the trading range. So at this point of time, when we are describing this period in the history of the oil market, we are we are going to say that the trading ranges were very narrow, okay? Or the market. Another thing we could say is that market volatility was quite low, okay? Because it was not moving around much, okay? So that is what we would say. So it is not uh, bearish and bullish are not. Uh, appropriate to describe this kind of aspect of market activity and here we would say that suddenly volatility has picked up in this kind when we are looking at this phase of the market we would say that suddenly that volatility has picked up and trading ranges are much wider okay can you see that okay so this is real uh, real activity in the oil market you can see how uh, dramatically prices change and the nature of price action also changes okay so it's not just that the price is changing the nature of the movement is also changing okay so that was your original question you had an earlier question also before we started. Sir, I didn't understand the concept of. Didn't understand. Didn't understand the concept of earnings call. Earnings call. Yes. So the earnings call is essentially a conference call. Okay. You understand conference call? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So earnings call is just a conference call. It's like a instead of saying earnings conference call, we call it an earnings call. Okay. So it's an earnings conference call where the top management of the company will uh, you'll find i think if you search on yahoo finance you may find uh, the earnings call link also to the audio okay so uh, you won't get invited to the earnings call because only the analysts are invited typically okay so uh, you that's a conference call between the analysts who are covering the company and the top management of the company so the cfo the ceo the chairman maybe okay some of the top management team okay and uh, the uh, and the analysts who are covering the company so the analysts will ask the CFO the CEO they'll ask them lots of questions like what is your expectation for future quarters what is happening are you seeing any effects from the trade war are you seeing any effects on your orders you know this kind of stuff so it's a con it's just a conference call it's a conference call the subject matter of the conference call is the recent earnings release okay which is basically they will do it probably one day or the same day one day later or the same day as the earnings release and they'll get together with these analysts and if you're i think if you go to the company website you'll get the earnings call there if you go to the investor relations page you'll get the earnings call transcript there as well okay so that's what it is okay it's just a conference call okay all right yeah so in the last video, Mike, Mike. In the last video, you mentioned about tight stocks, tight stocks, or tight 
stop for? No, I used, I said tight stop. Tight stop. What tight stop as in tight and loose. Okay, like this uh, shirt is very tight or this shirt is very loose. In that same sense, okay. Sure. Tight stop means essentially tight stop. Uh, you understood the term? No. You understand stop? Yes. Okay. And tight and loose, you understand? Yes. Okay. So tight stop is essentially this. Like if I gave you this example, like I gave you this example of dollar yen, right? If I look at this. Now, if I have a bearish view on dollar yen, okay. If I have a bearish view on dollar yen, uh, I will obviously go short. Okay. Now, as far as the placement of the stop is concerned, on this chart, at, you can see at least two clear, two or three clear options. Okay, for placing the stop, multiple clear options. I have many options. So, if uh, we'll see the logic for this a little bit later, as you notice, these are going down in waves. Okay, and the previous highs and lows are not being broken. Are not being broken right in a particular clear trend okay that's actually the definition of a trend which we'll get into later so i use the simple logic so i could do place my stop at so if i'm going short okay so if i'm going short the stop will be above the market i'm assuming always that i'm going short at the market or going long at the market is everyone clear about the terms that i'm using so far yes okay going short at the market price okay now i i have to place a stop and i should always place a stop okay so i have multiple options i could place it here and usually i would place the stop at a previous high or previous low which you can see on the chart is this clear yes okay why are you not looking convinced are you convinced so you're not able to follow no i have another doubt but, but okay okay so uh, now this i uh, does everyone follow that this is one option if i'm always placing the stops at previous highs and lows okay the logic essentially is that when i look at a trend i see that when there's a trend happening it's not breaking the previous highs and lows okay it just goes in lower highs lower lows in a downtrend that's actually the definition of a trend okay higher highs. i don't want to get into that right now because it's kind of a little bit technical but generally you can see uh, one safe way to i can just tell it to you without giving you the logic okay i'm just telling you that generally when you're trading from a technical perspective okay uh, you you should place your stops at previous highs and lows okay so obviously if i'm going short my stop has to be above the market because what will happen when the market hits the stop trigger i will have to buy back my position i went short dollar means i sold dollars if uh, maybe it's a little easier let me not confuse it with uh, currency trading because it's a little more complicated let's go back to let's say um, let's look at a chart which is actually bearish yeah now you see tesla motors here okay now suppose i am um, okay so let's just use this one okay now suppose i'm bearish on tesla okay so you notice how this trend is going if you see this is like the, the definition of a downtrend a sequence of higher lower highs all the highs are lower can you see that yes all the successive highs are lower okay this one is a little bit but if you don't count these smaller waves okay you have to focus on a particular degree of movement don't try to look at all the waves of different degree together then you'll get confused you lock it to a degree of movement that means at this point i'm only looking at this size of movement this up down up down uh, up down up down okay so i see that it's all the all the highs are lower in the downtrend i see that all the highs are lower all the successive lows are also lower okay if you just look at a chart later on you don't have to remember this like don't try to say higher highs higher lows. it'll be like betty bought a bit of that kind of thing don't confuse yourself just look at a chart and then recall the definition by looking at the chart okay because this is all actual data okay in every chart you'll see on every chart you're going to see this pattern everywhere so uh here i can see that all the highs are lower all the low successive lows are also lower can i see that low one low two low three low four low five 
and I see that all the lows are lower, all the highs are lower. So if I feel that, uh, so here we're getting to the logic of that. Okay, maybe we should just do it at this stage, but it'll slow us down further. But once again, you understand the logic of purely technical trading and see how simple it is. So the reason I'm doing this, uh, we are covering, uh, spending a fair bit of time on purely technical trading approaches is because it's a very, it's a completely legitimate approach. Okay, it's, although it's not the mainstream approach. Uh, and second is that it's very simple. Okay, once you start getting into that business, once you start thinking like a surfer, that I don't need to worry about how many, what is the, uh, you know, uh, battery, uh, how, 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 how low can the battery costs go in Tesla, how many cars are they going to sell, how, what will be the future of autopilot, uh, you know, uh, self-driven cars and all that. That's all fundamental analysis. Okay, if you start going into that kind of what will be the adoption of electric EV, uh, electric vehicles, what will be the competition from BMW and all these other car makers who are also getting into this uh, EV business. Okay, so all that is if you start going into those things those are that's fundamental analysis okay but if you're a technical analyst if you're a technical trader you don't care about anything you just care about the price and maybe volume and some other market related stuff okay no interest in actually for all practical purposes i need not even know that this company makes cars okay i don't really care about what this company does as a technical trader it's important to understand that perspective as a technical trader you're mainly you're just concerned with the price some price based calculations all based on price and volume price volume and open interest which we won't get into open interest right now but essentially market generated information market activity generated information price is generated by market activity people are buying and selling that's how you know that that's the price right so it's all so it's a very unique kind of perspective and it's useful to be able to understand this perspective also even if eventually later on you decide i'm only going to use fundamentals but still you should know what technical trading is okay and it's a completely as i said if you feel comfortable with this approach totally go with it don't don't worry that you're not looking am i doing something wrong like i'm not looking at the fundamental. no there's a totally legitimate approach as long as you stick to highly liquid stocks and highly liquid assets okay in generally everywhere in the world you have to stick to highly liquid markets which means highly liquid means very high levels of activity high volume traded okay that's liquid so in, in if you're applying this technical straight uh, purely technical trading trading strategy in india in indian equities the rule would be don't go beyond the nifty 50 stocks don't start trading all these banana republic small stocks okay that should be out of bounds you should trade if you're a purely technical trader you should only trade nifty 50 stocks because they're all very liquid is the message clear to everyone yes, sir. okay so what we are discussing now is all these elements of technical trading so you understand how you'll see how logical the system is and uh, how simple it is okay so that's one of the reasons i'm giving it to you uh, so that you can use this in your trading at least as a starting point you'll have something because fundamental analysis is a massive domain actually it will take a long time to cover everything that's involved okay and it's also not easy to uh, come up with simple trading rules okay so uh, so here you can see so the definition of a trend essentially is so we are defining a trend so um, where should we put it? Let's put it in the NSE law. Okay, so uptrend equals series of. We have all this stuff written down somewhere. I've just got to find because right now, what is. Um, okay, so the. We'll see the swelling later. Higher highs. both highs and lows are higher okay if you look at an uptrend okay like this part is an uptrend here the lows are higher and the highs are also higher this is clear simple don't have to memorize this definition just draw the pattern on a sheet of paper that you know what kind of pattern to draw that is always going up and it's always going down okay in this sawtooth pattern and then this actually uh, here you can see from here itself actually it started from here so this high is actually you can't make out here but this high is actually lower than this high so this really was the high in tesla which which means tesla has not gone made a new high since june of 2017 
okay so this i figured out by looking at the you have to closely look at yahoo finance or somewhere go and even here you can do it you can change the thing and then you can really zoom in and read the values read the value you can see the values are coming up here can you see them when you move your cursor the values are coming up but since this is an hourly chart a four hourly chart you will it will be difficult to read the exact high but this high is actually lower than this high so on a larger pattern you can also say high one high one low one high two low two has not yet gone below low one but now it has gone below low one okay so if you count really big moves like this anyway so now you can see also on the downtrend you can see series of successively lower highs and successively lower lows is this clear is everyone following yes, simple definition of uptrend and downtrend okay so and you can apply this and test it on any chart everywhere you look you'll see all these uptrends and downtrends okay so essentially what we are saying higher highs and lows so um, We are getting into some of the uh, actually we are not I was not able to cover what I intended to cover but I mean anyway it doesn't matter we've got into this naturally that's fine downtrend should be what should be lower lower highs and lower lows so it's clear in the case of a downtrend very simple no need to memorize okay um, just need to revise okay this need to revise can be removed okay so uh, okay so successively lower highs and lows as you can see here tesla okay so so for instance so so what, what was i discussing so, tight stop we were discussing the concept of the tight stop so we should actually have this as also something um tight stop well, let's put loss here uh, that stop trigger is close to the uh, entry price and opposite of tight in this context is not loose it's actually wide okay wide stop is stop trigger is far from let's say let's say quite far from the entry price okay let me give you an example of what this means so we got into the definition of no as these are connected ideas okay so essentially see again we can instead of looking at uh, we decided not to look at currency markets because they become a little confusing okay so everyone knows that if you are trading tesla you are buying and selling tesla shares okay so if i'm bearish on tesla and i we make the simplifying assumption that i always enter at the market price whatever is the current market price i enter at that price so in that case uh so i go and sh i go short at 223 now uh <coughs> see let's first understand why the logic what is the logic of putting the stop what is the logic of putting the stop at the previous high and the low okay now if my view is bearish then what is my projection that means if you ask me to draw a projection on a screen with dotted on a, on a page with dotted lines <coughs> my dotted lines would go like essentially why am i bearish another way of stating the bearish view is to say that my view is that the current downtrend is going to continue the current ground trend is going to continue okay which is another way you can say that the current downtrend is uh, is incomplete okay the current downtrend is going to continue uh, so it's in incomplete which therefore obviously it has to continue so if the current downtrend is going to continue what should you see as you project you should what is the downtrend successively lower highs and lower lows right so as the downtrend continues it should continue to make lower highs and lower lows that is the characteristic of a downtrend this is clear and what that means essentially is that whatever as it is rising from here it can't make a high higher than this because then that would not be a lower high this is clear okay and it has to make a low lower than this because only then do you get a lower low 
Is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Everyone is following? Surbi, you are following? Okay. What is the logic? And so, what is the meaning of having a bearish view? Is having a bear. Yeah. Yeah, so we are trying to understand what does it what does it was it that what does it actually mean to have a bearish view? Okay, so what does it actually mean to have a bearish view? So here the what it means is essentially that if I have a bearish view that means I'm saying that the downtrend is Still going it's still continuing which is another way of saying that is that the downtrend is incomplete Okay so incomplete means it has to keep on it has to go in the same direction and complete okay so it will get it is still continuing okay it is still in progress it is still continuing whatever you want to say so the downtrend is still in progress okay still still going on so if the downtrend is still continuing then what is the characteristic of a downtrend lower highs and lows lower highs and lower lows okay so in that case if the characteristic of a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows and by having a bearish view okay now we are not getting into the question of how did i come to my bearish view why is my view bearish and not bullish that we are that's a very big question we are not getting into that right now let's assume that somehow i even by tossing a coin i came to a bearish view okay so i uh, you take that as a given but what does it mean once you say that i have a bearish view okay once i say that that what that means essentially is that i am saying that the downtrend is not complete it is still continuing so therefore and it says the characteristic of a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows then we should continue to see lower highs and lower lows this is logical okay now it sounds like a lot of english words so it might get a little confusing but uh, you understand this concept so far okay yes bharat anything okay all right so therefore uh, is it clear now yash so as a first step so go step by step so it's good that you ask a question whenever anything is not clear any step is not clear immediately ask a question okay so at least we make sure that whatever we cover okay even if it's five centimeters whatever we cover everybody is 100 percent clear about that okay all right so the first thing we have done is established what is the meaning of a bearish view a bearish view means you're stating that that in your opinion the downtrend is still incomplete it is still continuing and then we call back the definition of a downtrend a series of high, a successively higher lower highs and lower lows so therefore if the downtrend is still continuing then we should continue to see higher uh, lower highs and lower lows this is clear yes very logical okay now if that is the case then we can't have a high higher than this yes, sir. if my view is right we can't have a high higher than this and we should have a low lower than this right if my view is correct right okay so that is the logic now therefore if i'm going short tesla and we assume as i said that if you have a bearish view you will you will go short and you will always go short at the market price you will go short or long or whatever trade you do you'll do at the current market price okay so i go short at 225 let's say a 223 okay and now where is my stop now think about this what does the stop actually do for you okay a stop is a signal to you a stop here the stop the trigger level for the stop and then once the trigger is hit then the market it'll execute a market order and take you out of the position so first understand what a stop does the stop reverses your entry position okay so let's we can write this down as well here okay so i'm only writing one side of the of the equation bearish view i'm not then you can flip it around for the other side okay view implies that uh, current downtrend is still in progress is that okay it's still in progress okay implies we should continue to see is this clear the logical flow is clear yes. so far okay we should continue to see successively lower highs and lows okay and this condition should not obviously be violated okay so now uh, where were we actually uh, yeah so i was saying that we assume that we always trade at the market now what does the stop actually uh, i mean why do you place i mean the place where you put the stop which is essentially what the stop does for you let's write this down here um, a stop we can call this a stop loss initially for a stop um, is is meant to 
reverse the uh, original uh, position entered into and um, zero position okay remember we talked about zero position i think uh, it was uh, gulati who had asked about what is the position and yes when we discuss intraday trading intraday trading remember we discuss intraday what is the definition of intraday trading that at the end of the day you have zero position and then we discussed then gulati asked about what is the position then we discussed a position position is if your balance sheet is all cash your asset side of the balance sheet is all cash so i've given that long definition in your notes okay so one of the things you guys are going to find is that whatever we are learning the notes are a little bit scattered here and there okay partly because it's a little counterintuitive because i'm trying to make it organized but the notes may be a little scattered here and there but that should be you should just deal with it okay somebody was saying once that i want all my notes in one place we can't have so much spoon feeding okay so to save uh, time we are doing some of these uh, we are notes are but you know where the notes are you have access to the notes and you don't really need to take much notes uh, too many notes in class because everything that's important i'm writing down okay so uh, if you see a zero position so what is the objective understand what is the objective of the stop stop order or the stop loss order the objective is essentially to take you out of your position completely you understand what i mean by this that for instance if i if i sold let's say 5000 shares of tesla okay when i put a stop order the objective of that uh, stop order is that once that stop order is triggered and executed okay once that order is executed okay then it should now i've sold 5000 shares of tesla after the execution of the stop order this is my entry this is my entry uh, trade okay i went short 5000 shares of tesla now once the stop is hit once the stop is triggered and the stop order is executed it will essentially uh, it should create a position where i have i have left with zero position so initially my balance sheet if you look at the traders balance sheet initial position let's say is all cash okay so the asset side is all 100% cash and the liabilities is 100% owners equity okay now what happens is you you buy 5000 shares of tesla okay so whatever it costs you that cash balance goes back goes down by that much and then the asset mix has changed now instead of just having all cash on the asset side you have 5000 shares of tesla plus the remaining cash is this clear and the owner's equity will remain unchanged initially but as the price of tesla fluctuates that owner's equity will keep changing okay if the price goes up after you bought it the owner's equity will increase if the price goes down after you bought it then the owner's equity will decrease is everyone following so far yes okay everyone clear yes. okay so uh, therefore once and then once you execute the stop the execute once you execute the stop for the full position the result of the execution of the stop order is that you go back you have no position left so once again your balance sheet returns to all cash okay balance sheet returns to all cash and then again liabilities is all uh, is owners equity okay but in this case because you have a loss so your cash balance was lower and your owner's equity has gone down essentially because you have a loss this is clear okay so if you lose ten thousand dollars let's say you started with hundred thousand dollars and you lose ten thousand dollars on this tesla trade okay then your after the execution of your stop order your balance sheet has gone back to all cash but now the balance sheet size is ninety thousand dollars okay you started with hundred thousand dollars you lost ten thousand dollars so your balance sheet size has shrunk now you have ninety thousand of cash and ninety thousand of owner's equity and ten thousand owner's equity has gone up in smoke because you lost that money okay this is the same concept of statement of changes in shareholders equity now if you drew the same uh, analysis here you will see that there is a statement of changes and because and your pnl is showing a loss of ten thousand dollars clear is everyone following yes sir burma you're following okay your nod is not very convincing <laughs> is it a convincing nod uh, yes sir. okay your yes is also not very convincing <laughs> okay all right okay 
So, uh, all right. So, is this clear? Yes. The objective and the result, the consequence of the triggering of the stop or the execution of the stop order. So, understand it in technical terms. What is not a position? Cash is not a position. If you see in the detailed notes I have given you in your summary sheet, in the summary document where we keep track of what we are covering every day. The th th summary document. There I've defined the position. Okay, read it. You'll see. So if their position means cash is not a position because position is only something which is an exposure which can cause us to lose money. Cash does not lose value. If we ignore inflation, cash does not lose value. Okay, so cash is all cash is not a position. The moment you go from all cash to some cash and 5,000 shares of Tesla, now you've got a position because the shares of Tesla, the share price keeps fluctuating. So that's the meaning of a position. Okay, so essentially once you execute the stop order, you have gone, gone back to a zero position. Your balance sheet is once again all cash. You have realized a profit or loss. In this case, stop loss is you lose a, you realize a loss. Okay, uh, because it's straight away after doing your trade. Is this clear so far? Yes. So the objective of the stop is to take you out of your position. This is what we call being taken out of the position. Your position is completely removed. Whatever you started with, it's removed completely. Is this clear? Okay. Now, so think about it logically. I went short because I had a bearish view. I had a bearish view. So obviously now it's understood here that everybody wants to make money. So if I if I have a bearish view, I'm not going to go long because then if my view is correct, I'll lose money. But so obviously everybody wants to make money. So you assume that. And if I have a bearish view, that means my mental projection is no high above this and a new low above this, uh, below this, new low below this, continuing pattern of lower lows and lower highs. This is my projection. So the way you profit from that, if that's going to be the market uh, projection, uh, the, the path of the market price, how do I profit from that? By going long or by going short? short. By selling it, not by buying it, yeah. okay? So that's why I go short. So you see, everything is logical. You can actually program it into a computer. Once you put in the initial assumptions, everything follows logically, okay? You don't have to memorize anything. Why are you going short with the bearish view? Because a bearish view implies a projection of continued falls in the market price. And since everybody wants to make money, how do you make money if the scenario is going to be continued drops in the market price? The way you make money is not by buying that share, but by selling that share. So that's why you sell that share and go short. This is clear? Everyone follows? Yes. Okay. So this is why a bearish view is consistent with a short position and a bullish view will be consistent with a long position. Okay, so far everything is logical. Okay, so now I went short because uh, you know I had this bearish view. Okay, and the bearish view is equivalent to saying that the downtrend is still continuing. Okay, but what happens, what kind of statement, what kind of information is the market giving to me if after I go short here, the market goes and shoots above this 257 high. Then what kind of information has the market given me? Is my assumption about the continuation of the downtrend, is this still valid? No, no, no. It's no longer valid, okay? So, if you do something based on a certain assumption, okay, I did my short trade based on the assumption that the downtrend is still continuing. Now, if I did something based on a certain assumption, once I have information that the assumption is no longer valid, then should I continue to do that thing? No, no. I should unwind it if possible, okay? Which is essentially what, remember I gave you the story of, uh, uh, I think it was um, uh, Royal Dutch Shell and that 7 billion investment in the in the Alaskan uh, drilling project, right? So what was the assumption that they made? $100 barrel, $100 oil, okay? So the uh, average price realization, they were, they were expecting $100 oil when they did the NPV analysis of the project, that's why they went into the project. Okay, so after a few years, they found that they changed their view and they felt that the assumption of $100 oil is no longer valid. So once the assumption is invalidated, assumption based on which they entered the project, the key assumption. So they did the rational thing, which they, which is that they took took out, they, they exited from the project. They did not make any further investments. This is clear. Yes, so this is consistent. So once you do something based on a certain assumption, and then you find that the assumption was not actually valid, then logically you should unwind that action if you if you can. Sometimes you can't. Okay, but if you can, you should. Is this clear to everyone? Yes. Logical. Okay, so therefore, now you understand better why I say that one of my options is to place the stop here, 
try to ma try to ma uh, try to sort of uh, add up all the things that we have covered what is the goal of the stop the stop the goal of the stop is to reduce my position to zero okay the goal of the stop is to reduce my position to zero which means i have no commitments in the market okay and if my assumption is i i do a trade i go short tesla shares based on the assumption that the downtrend in tesla is still continuing but when the market shoots above this 257 high let's say goes to 273 next price i should go short at 223 next price is 273 okay then the market has invalidated my assumption yes. that the downtrend in tesla is still continuing so whatever i did based on that assumption that i should undo it if i can okay so therefore i should and how do i undo it i do as i execute a stop order because we know that what does the stop order do it basically cancels your position effectively it does the reverse transaction if you sold 5000 shares when you put the stop order the stop order will basically do it will do a buy of 5000 shares so that it will have the net effect of leaving you with a zero position are you following so far yes sir everyone is clear yes sir okay all the steps are clear logically yes, go back and replay the video and make sure you understand so all the stuff that we covered pretty much the last two sessions everything i've been talking pretty much continuously and all the time we are covering important concept you have to go back make your own notes listen to the video make your own notes that's how you learn okay so i don't make you take notes in the class because that way we can make the most use of the class time so that you can be attentive in the class but later on to internalize the learning you should try to make your own notes if you if you feel you need to it will benefit you right but at least you should go through i see only eight views or nine views okay so i should see lots more views because you everybody should be revising all the concepts because i'm, I'm pretty sure you haven't understood it on the first hearing okay so you should re replay the video and take notes okay whatever you feel you need to understand then you can play it back again etc okay so now is everyone clear but you've learned something useful today yes. you learned how technical trade you see that everything is totally logical yes. everything is don't fold your books yet we are not done yet okay yeah. we have three minutes one minute so so everything is so 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 far you follow i have a bearish view yes. imply certain thing about the continuation of the trend yes. i go short because i want to profit from the continuation of the trend the moment the market makes uh, violates the condition of lower highs and lower lows that means it's destroyed the uptrend or neutralized the uh, neutralized the downtrend okay so if i went short based on the continue uh, assumption about a continuation of the downtrend when the assumption is invalidated i should exit my position exit whatever i did based on that assumption which means i should exit my position so that's why i should do a i should do a stop loss okay and this is the reason why the stop is placed here because this is the earliest point at which the market is giving me information that my assumption was wrong okay but as i said here when now we are coming back to khushbu's question about tight stop and white stop what does that mean now if you see here there are many ways to do this okay i could say that i'm looking at this degree of trend down up down up down this degree of trend okay in which case i would place my stop here because i can see this is clearly the most recent uh, uh, low uh, high from which a new low was made okay alternatively i could say and this would be an example of a tight stop based on the data we have here okay it's reasonably close to the market now why you see why this is a tight stop when i show you what is a white stop now what is a white stop i could say that no no this, this stuff is too small this movement and all is too small for me i look at these big movements one down two up one down again down so i would place my stop over here 379 because all this stuff is too small for me i don't really care about these small movements so my stop is at 379 okay or 380 379 whatever 380 so that is also a logical statement it just it, it just depends on what degree of movement are you looking at okay here i was looking at fairly small degrees of movement you understand what is meant by degrees of movement i've just shown you that here you can look at different degrees of movement i could just say all this stuff is all this stuff is too small for me i don't care about this i just care about these big moves down up down up down so here therefore i put my stop over here now this becomes a white stop and so the definition of tight stop and white stop as you can see here is i think it's on the other page okay it's stop trigger is close to the entry price in the tight stop okay 
one more minute left one minute in the case this is a tight stop 259 is a 256 at 258 is a tight stop because it is closer to the entry price entry price is same in both cases entry price is at the current market there there is only one current market price so entry price is 223 in both cases the tight stop is 259 okay and the white stop is 379 so you can't really understand a tight stop unless you also have a reference of a white stop okay so ideally you have both references but now you understand what is meant by tight stop and a white stop and we already had a discussion about expected value remember white stop means lower chance of getting triggered but higher loss if you have a trigger if it's triggered go back and listen to the videos connect all this stuff and tight stop means higher chance of getting triggered higher probability but average outcome is lower average negative outcome is lower everybody's looking black we had this discussion the other day remember so you should connect to a related idea mathematical expectation so revise all this stuff listen to the videos revise all that stuff right okay now you can go your question is a technical question and I'll keep the recording open. So, uh, the thing is, uh, you are trying to explain that a tight stop basically means that when we see the smaller variations near to the entry price and a wide stop means that uh, the entry price is lower than the entry price. So, you are trying to explain that a tight stop means that when we see the larger variations and then the wide stop. Yeah, it is totally uh, about the zoom. Like in cameras, you have a zoom concept. Yes, yes. You can, I can look at, I can look at these people here. I can, I can just or zoom I can in and look at Raja. So that's zoom. So what kind of what level of zoom? What zoom are you using? If you have zoomed in a lot, then you have a tight stop. If you have zoomed out, if you have zoomed out, then you have a wide stop. So therefore, when you're looking at charts, you have to be very clear about what is the zoom that you are using. Don't use multiple zooms together. Then you will get confused. Okay. Tarun, you have a technical question. Okay.